Good morning, digital designers. Uh, today, we're switching gears from working with um, existing photos in Photoshop, you know, cutting and pasting and rearranging into actually creating your own digital artworks using the painting tools in Photoshop. So we're going to be working with your pen tablets and each of you has a pen tablet at your computer. Uh, which is plugged in over USB. You want to make sure that you're using that today. Uh, you're also going to want to choose one of our three practice images that's here on Classroom, the apple, the avocado, or the donut. I'm going to start with the apple for mine, but feel free to pick any other image you want from there. Remember, all you have to do is right-click it, go to the three dots, open, and then from there, you can download the image to your computer. Now, I've done this already, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Photoshop. And uh, we're going to set up a canvas for ourselves to try practicing with this tool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do New File. And I'll get my options to pop up. And we're going to be doing an art and illustration piece today. So choose Art and Illustration. And let's use the 2000 pixel grid. This is a nice big empty canvas. You can see it's got 300 pixels per inch, so it'll look good if we print it out. Uh, and over here on the side, I'm going to go ahead and give it a name with my name and digital painting. Okay. Now, once you create that canvas, you'll have a big open screen you can use for print uh, painting. I've also moved my toolbar and my layers over here so that I can reach them really easily as I'm going through. I want to open up that uh, beginning photo that I downloaded and add it to my canvas here. So I'm going to do File, Open, uh, go to my desktop folder where I added this image, and open up the Apple. And what I'm going to do is actually drag this image over onto my canvas and just kind of set it off to the side for a second. Okay, let's actually let's put it right down here. Um, okay, so when you're digital painting in Photoshop, it's really important that you organize your layers. And we're going to be creating basically four layers here. We're going to do one layer that has the line art for whatever it is we're painting. We're going to have one layer that has just the flat colors, the reds, the greens, the browns. And then we're going to have two layers, one for shadows and one for highlights. OK, so this is my reference image at the top. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make those other layers for myself. Let's add a layer here and we're going to rename it line art. OK. And this is going to be the easiest step of the process. This is where we just kind of want to outline the object that we're painting and get some of the basic structures in place. So I'll take uh, black and my brush tool. Okay, Remember, brush tool is letter B on your keyboard. And once you select the brush tool, all of your options for that brush show up here at the top of the screen. Okay. Um, normally, when we're use, when we've used the brush so far, we've just been using like um, either a soft, fluffy brush or a hard edge brush. You know, when you guys have been making masks and that sort of thing. But I want you to notice that in your brushes, you actually have categories of different brushes you can use. There's dry media, which is like pencils and charcoal and things that have kind of a gritty edge to it. There's wet media, which has watercolor brushes and oil paints and things like that. And then there's special effects brushes. These are ones that will create like splatter paint effects and, um, and so on. You can see some of the options you have in there. Um, there are thousands more brushes, but I'm going to hold that till our next lesson because I don't want to overwhelm you with brushes right off the bat. So what I'm going to do is choose from my dry brushes set. And I want to use just the pencil tool here. So I'm going to take the pencil. Right now it's only eight pixels, so it's going to be real small. Um, and I can make that bigger or smaller using the bracket keys on my keyboard. Okay, so let's make it a little bit bigger so I can see it. The other thing I want to pay attention to here at the top is this option that says smoothing. Smoothing makes it so that as you're drawing, even if your hand shakes a little bit, it won't show up. It's actually going to smooth those lines out for you. So I'm going to turn the smoothing up to about 50%. Okay, that should be good. I'll zoom in. 
move my apple onto the main screen here. And all I'm going to do on this line art layer is block out the shape of my apple. It's a little bit too big of a brush. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Okay. So I'm just going to use my pen tablet and block out the basic shape of this apple like this. Okay. Now, if you aren't perfect, no worries. This is art. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, sometimes it looks really cool to have a little bit of variation in your drawing. But what I'm going to do is just put in the basic forms here. Let's block out this leaf. Uh, I got the little curve on the apple here. I know that there's a shadow down there, but I don't need to trace that. I just need the shape of the apple, okay? Um, and maybe what I'll do is just put a little indication here where that center line is. Okay, I'm happy with that. Cool, so my line art is in place, and if I hide the apple layer, you can see that I've got my basic outline, okay? Now, I'm going to start painting this apple, but I want to use the uh, colors from the photo. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'll go down to my apple layer. I'm going to just move this off to the side. And I'm going to turn this from being flat colors to pixels. So I can grab some of these colors to use in my painting. Okay. Um, so I think what I'll do, let me drag this little apple over here. I'm going to have two copies. And on this apple, if you need to see how to do a copy, just right click it and duplicate it, right? We're going to take this copy one and I'm going to go up to filter, pixelate, and mosaic. Okay. And what this is going to do is as I turn this slider up, it's going to really heavily pixelate that image. Um, and I want to just push it. I'm going to go pretty big here because I only need some swatches that I can pull colors from, like dark red, light red, green, a little bit of brown in there this down just a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay. So this is where I'm going to pull my colors from. And this is how I'm going to paint it. You with me? All right, let's try to go a little bit farther here. So now it's time to add a layer for color. I'm going to add this new layer. Call it colors. I'm going to grab my paintbrush. And I think for painting, I'm going to switch from my dry media to one of my wet brushes here. Let's go to this thick and thin one. All right, I'm gonna make this brush a lot bigger. And you may not know this, but you can actually sample colors with your brush. The way that you do it is if you hold down Alt, your paintbrush turns into a little eyedropper. And you can put that eyedropper over the color that you want to sample from. So I'm going to pick this kind of like medium red here. And when you click, it picks up that color. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and use this big brush to block in the basic red of the apple. I'll grab the green here, make my brush a little bit smaller, zoom in a bit. And I'll block in the greens here at the top. And then the other color that's in here is that kind of brownish of the stem. I'm going to make my brush a lot smaller. That shape in. Okay. All right. Now uh, let's start to layer up some of these other colors that are in here. So we know that the apple has this kind of shadow side right here. If you squint your eyes, you can see it really well. So I'm going to grab some of that darker red now and make my brush big again. And I just want to kind of eyeball where I see that dark spot on the apple. It kind of goes like right there. And then there's a little bit that comes over this way. All right, that looks pretty good. I've got a, a little bit of a dark area up here. So let's grab some of that red and we'll just push a little blur right here. Actually, the more colors that you sample, the more depth that your painting is going to have. So feel free to get kind of wild with this. As you squint your eyes and you look at the design, just really loosely 
start blocking out these colors, okay? Um, I'm going to put some of this in. I see that there's some color down here on the low side of the apple. Let's put that in. Um, I've got some really bright reds right in there. Let's grab some of this like pinky red and we'll just push that around the edge. There's a little bit, it's surprisingly, of some yellows and oranges up here. So I'm going to just toss that in. Don't get too worried about how it looks right now. At this point, we are simply blocking in color. Okay. We do have some really light pinks and whites where the apple is reflecting some light here. So I'm going to push this and I'm just going to block in pink. Okay. Um, and then over here, we've got a little bit of white. Let's take a brush and we'll just block out. Oops, a little bit too much. Remember, you can do control Z if you go off too much. Uh, don't feel bad about that. Just control Z it and go back a step. Uh, make my brush real small. I see that there's this reflection on the top of the apple. So let's push a little bit of that out there. And I see a little bit over on this side and a little bit right here, okay? Um, some darker greens up on my leaf because part of the leaf was in shadow. So I'm going to paint that in. There's a little bit of dark, okay? And, you know, feel free to add as much detail or color as you want to this. I'm just kind of stacking mine up for a second. Cool. All right. So I've got my basic uh, parts of the apple blocked in, and luckily they're all on the same layer here. That's really important that when we first do blocking, we want all of that color to be on one layer. It's going to make it easier for us. Okay. Now um, we can use one of our other brushes to kind of blend these areas a bit better. I'm going to switch from my paint, regular paintbrush. And if I look in my wet media brushes, you see that there's some in here called blenders. Okay, this is the wet blender. Um, and what this brush does is it lets you smudge two colors together. So if I take this brush and I just click, 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 right around the areas where two colors are touching. Okay, so I'm going to go right up to the edge here and I'm going to smudge and smudge and smudge. I'm going to smudge this area right here. Real quick little clicks and brush strokes. Okay. And if you need to, you can keep switching your brush up bigger using your bracket keys. Push this one around here. And you can see what I'm doing uh, is blending all of these blocky colors that I first created into some of the lighter colors here so it doesn't look so hard edged. We'll do a little bit up here with the greens. All right, now it's already getting quite a painterly effect. Okay. Let's push these around a little bit more. Don't go too overboard with it, but you know, you'll get the hang of it as you go here about how far you want to smudge it. Awesome. I'm liking how that looks right now already. Okay. So we've got our blocked colors in, we've smeared them up a little bit. Now we want to add the highlights and the shadows that we see in this image. So I'm going to need to create some new lines here or new layers. Let's add a new one and we're going to call it shadows. And I'm going to set this layer from normal to a mode called multiply. Anytime a layer is set to multiply, anything that you paint on that layer, will get darker. It will darken what's underneath of it, okay? Um, so I can take, let's just grab some black here and I'll show you how this works. I'm gonna take a black brush, okay? I've got my regular brush here. And I think I'll just go back to one of my general brushes. Let's use the um, soft brush. Maybe turn its hardness about halfway there, okay? So what does this brush do? Well, when I squint my eyes, I can see that there is a little bit of shadow underneath this apple. It's really, really dark. 
So I'm going to go on to my shadows layer here, and I'm just going to paint in a blob of black. And you're like, wait, that looks terrible. It looks way too dark. But remember, I can adjust this layer's opacity by turning down this slider and making it more or less um, transparent. Okay. So what I could do is if I make my brush a little bit softer and a little bit bigger, right? I can just tap underneath this apple and create some nice soft shadows on the bottom of it. Okay. I also see that there's a little bit of shadow. You know, we talked about that we could see a shadow right in here. And you're like, wait, Mr. Ruba, that's still too dark. All right, well, go here, turn your slider down until you get that level of shadow that you're looking for. Okay. And so anywhere where you see some dark shadows, just make your brush real small. Go ahead and paint in a little bit of shadow. I see some on this leaf here. Okay. I'll put a little bit up on this top part of the leaf. Looks good. Okay. That's how we do shadows in, with this tool. Um, and then the other one that I want to add is some highlights because I get some really bright white areas up here. So I'm going to add another new layer. I'm going to call this layer highlights. And I'm going to set it from normal mode to screen. Some of you guys remember screen from the hamburger project, right? It basically makes uh, the white parts of the image pop out more and it gets rid of any of the dark parts. So we can use screen to create highlights in our drawing. I'm going to switch to white. I'm going to take my brush tool. And I think for this one, I want something a little bit fuzzier edged right here. So I'll go over to my dry brushes. And I'm going to get, let's take the charcoal brush here. I think this one's going to work good. Turn my smoothing up a little bit. And with this brush and white, I'm going to squint and paint in wherever I see these little highlights along the apple. So we said already, got a big highlight right about here. Okay. The brush is running a little bit slow, so I'm going to just turn down that smooth and there we go okay so i'm putting in the big highlight right here uh there is a highlight right along the top edge of this apple which we saw earlier there's a little bit around the outside edge we call that rim lighting there's a reflected one over on this side okay blocking them out and i know what you're thinking you're like roper this looks terrible you've just ruined your apple don't worry about it because once we put those highlights in, we're going to come up to its opacity and turn this down until those highlights just kind of melt into the original painting. Okay. And if you're still feeling like those edges are a little bit too hard, remember you can go back to that um, mixer brush. I'll go to my wet brushes, take the blender, and we'll just use this to blend those highlights even more. Okay. Okay. Very cool. I'm liking how this is looking. Um, all right. So let's, we're about ready to finish up our apple here. I think what I'm going to do is hide all my reference layers. So I don't need this photo, I don't need the pixels anymore. Uh, I don't need the, well, I do need the colors. We'll leave that one in there. Um, I got my shadows. I got my highlights. I don't really need the line art anymore. So we could just turn that one off. You can see my kind of abstract apple. Maybe I'll leave that on. But what I want to do is clean up uh, these edges that go outside of the line art. So I'm going to switch over to my um, eraser. The eraser tool is the letter E. I want to make sure I'm on my color layer and I'm going to zoom in and just let's get ourselves a nice harder edged eraser. If you want, you can turn up smoothing on erasers too. So your hand doesn't shake and I'm just going to brush right along the outside edge of my line art. Okay. I'm doing this kind of quick so you can see I missed a few areas here but no worries. 
Okay, we'll make this a little bit smaller. We're going to kick it up this way. Make this a little bit smaller and go right through here. Now, I won't do this whole thing on this video, but I do want to just show you why uh, I'm making these erase marks because that means even if we turn off the line art to our apple, it'll fit into those edges, okay? So let me just finish this last little bit of the apple here. I'll zoom out. And now if I turn off my line art, I've got a much cleaner outline to that apple um, and it really kind of holds its shape. If you see any other bumps or weirdness, you can just come in here with your eraser and clean it up by Getting rid of some of those edges, okay? Pretty cool little digital painting. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with on this first practice assignment. Remember, this is all just about getting comfortable using your pen tablet and how the brushes work. So pick one starting image that's going to work best for you. Give it your best shot. And when you're done today, I really want you to give me a screenshot of your final artwork and the layers that you included for this. So um, when you get to a finish point, it would be great if you could take your artwork and let me just move these up a little bit. We'll scale this up. Let's see that I did this a little bit bigger. So, okay. So let's say this is my final painting. Um, use your snipping tool to just capture what you created and how you did it with your layers over here. So I'm going to go down to my start menu type in the word snip, grab the snipping tool, and take a screenshot of both my artwork and my layers, okay? So that'll snap a little picture of it, and you can then go ahead and save this to your digital design. So I'll call this Roper uh, Digital Painting, and save it as a JPEG. Okay. This will be a great addition to your learning journal and kind of show you how you organized your layers so that you can use that on future projects. All right, guys, that's enough for me today. Have fun with this project and I'll be around to help out as we go.